This Adamsville High School senior couldn't have imagined the impact he would have on West Tennessee or that he would be the focus of three Hollywood movies. Buford Pusser, the colorful and often controversial sheriff of McNary County, is honored each year at a Memorial Day weekend festival. His Adamsville home is now a state-sanctioned museum. My father was uh, Buford Pusser's chief deputy. His name was Jim Moffitt. And uh, they called him Grady in the movies, and he and my dad were, Buford and my dad were best friends. Patsy Blevins is the curator of the museum, which opened in 1988. More than 106,000 people have stopped by to learn more about Buford and his years as sheriff. And I remember good things about Buford. He was a very outgoing person, and he, he was just really fair to everybody. But, you know, he also had his side when you made him mad that he could get tough with you. Asthma shortened his time in the Marines, and Buford made his way to the wrestling arenas of Chicago. Buford the Bull was 6 feet 6 inches tall and a strong 250 pounds. He once wrestled and beat a live grizzly bear. Chicago is where he met and married Pauline in 1959, a divorcee with two children. Buford's daughter, Dewana, was born in 1961. The young family made their way back to the quieter pace of McNary County. I liked him being sheriff. See, my father ran for sheriff in 1970. That was the year that Buford had to step down. And uh, I don't think Daddy really wanted to be a sheriff. He'd done it for Buford. And they didn't win that year because they had uh, seven Republicans running and one Democrat, and they just kind of split the Republican vote up that year. At only 26 years old in 1964, Buford was elected McNary County Sheriff on a promise to clean up the moonshine gambling and prostitution running rampant along the Tennessee-Mississippi border. In 1965 alone, Buford and his deputies destroyed 87 whiskey stills. During three consecutive terms as sheriff, Buford was shot eight times, knifed seven, and run over by a speeding car. His enemies played rough. He was fighting crime. He was fighting the mob, which was behind the uh, moonshine whiskey. And they were some really mean people. And so he set out when he became sheriff to rid this county of uh, moonshine. And he did that. Buford's career took its toll in a Saturday morning ambush in August 1967. Pauline was killed and Buford's jaw was destroyed by a hail of bullets. My mother was killed when I was six and my daddy raised me as a single parent from six to 13. And in doing that, we were very close. Uh, my grandmother came to live with us um, when my mother got killed to help take care of. Also, I have a stepbrother and stepsister. And a lot of people go, why aren't they in the movie? Well. The first, the brother was, but the stepsister didn't want to be at the time. So, but anyway, she, uh, she and I are real close uh, now. But my dad, I remember him as a gentle giant, but I also knew not to cross my daddy. He whipped me three times in my life, and that was it. But my grandmother, now she had to take a switch to me about three times a week, you know. <laughs> But he was, he was a great dad. I mean, he was just, you know, and every little girl looks up to their daddy, just about. Every little girl looks up to their daddy. And, of course, I did, too. Uh, I knew the kind of danger he was in as I got older. And, uh, you know, I remember praying and praying and praying for him two or three times during the day even because I was always so worried and so concerned about him. Others also remember Buford's soft side. In a local newspaper column, one man remembers Buford calling him Little Man as a teenager. One winter, he was washing cars at a gas station when Buford walked up and gave him a new hooded coat so he'd be warm. We was real close. We used to do a lot of racing back in the 60s, and uh, I had the car he never could outrun, and I still got it. That's what the book's about, going back in the old days. Buford was, we was close to his brother. 
to me, he was a hero and he was a gentleman and he was a heck of a man. He just had an accident and got killed. It would have been a plus if he was still living and doing what we're doing now. He ain't no telling how much money we'd raise for charity because he catered to kids. August 21st, 1974, Buford attended a press conference in Memphis to announce that he would play himself in a movie sequel. He returned home to mow the lawn, and then he went to the McNary County Fair to work the dunking booth. The dunking booth was cl broke, and so he didn't get to ride it. So we, so we went around the fair together, and he was winning me all kind of stuff animals, teddy bears, and, and stuffed dogs and stuff like that, doing the different games. We had a wonderful night together. I'm so grateful that we had that time together. And um, later on we left, uh, we went up to the gate to wait for her parents. They were a little late. And at one point he even told the people at the gate, he said, I'm gonna leave and take the girls with me, tell her parents when they pull up here. And so in doing that, uh, this man stopped him on the way to his car. And then just a few minutes, her parents pulled up and we went with them, or we'd have been with him that night. Traveling State Road 64 between Adamsville and Selmer, Buford's Corvette went out of control, careened into the embankment and flipped. Buford was killed. Accident or assassination? That question is debated to this day. His Corvette had set out for a night or two over in Selmer at a gas station uh, where they'd worked on it, changed oil, done whatever. Daddy had had the car almost a year. Some people didn't think he knew how to drive it. He'd had the car for almost a year. Trust me, he knew how to drive it. I rode with him many a miles, and many a miles there were times when we almost were airborne. And Daddy did drive fast. I doubt my mind that he was driving fast, but everybody knew that. But there was a long levee before you get to where he was killed, and uh, I believe that that's where uh, the sabotage began. Uh, or, or where they pulled out in front of me. And uh, there's some other things involved, but I'd rather, rather not say right now. But, but that's, and I knew that they thought, I think they thought that he would run off the levee, never thought that he'd make it to where he did. But he was thrown out of the car and the T-tops were off. And when I got to him, because we were the next car back behind, just far enough behind that we couldn't see what happened, but close enough to be some of the first ones there. And he was laying face down in the gravel. There's three or four tales on that. and. Uh, I'm, I go along with the family. There was something behind it, but it was never proved. So the state trooper said it was just a high rate of speed. But still, I think there was something behind it. Because they had vowed to kill him, and, and I think they finally got him. The museum gives visitors a candid look into the life and career of Buford Pusser. From the clothes he wore to the room where Elvis sat during Buford's funeral, it's a walk through personal, professional, and McNary County history. I saw the movie years ago. I was going through the town and I saw it. A friend of mine is running for sheriff of our county in Arkansas, which is very corrupt. I won't use the name. But anyway, this is his idol, Buford Pusser. He carries around an old baseball bat. He wants to be just like Buford Pusser and clean up the county that we live in. And he has his work cut out for him. Oh, I miss my dad so much. You know, my two daughters are here and and I wish they could have known their granddaddy. I wish they could have known him. You know, and they try and they work so hard to help me each year with this. And I just wish they could have known him. And I wish he could have known them. I think he would be very proud of them.